Yes. Elon, we're going to talk, obviously, about SpaceX, the wider goals for SpaceX. Um, before we do that, I would love to focus on Starlink. Now, this is a plan to provide the world with broadband coverage via satellites. You've actually compared the project to rebuilding the internet in space. You're an engineer at heart, Elon. Um, what has driven you to take on this new challenge? Well, uh, there's a need for connectivity in places that don't have it right now or, or where it is, uh, connectivity is very limited or very expensive. Um, but uh, at many parts of the world, like I said, it's simply not available. So, uh, you can think of Starlink as filling in the gaps between uh, 5G uh, and uh, fiber and um, and really getting to the parts of the world that are the, the hardest to reach, the, 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 the most difficult to reach, uh, 3%, possibly 5%. Um, and I think it really quite nicely complements uh, fiber and, uh, and 5G. Nice complementary technology, you're saying, and, and we'll dive a bit deeper into that. Um, Elon, first of all, give us a bit of a kind of high-level overview as to how far progressed Starlink actually is. What have you done so far? So uh, we've, we've launched and, and now have active uh, over 1,500 satellites. Um, let's see, the, I mean, there are a few interesting stats. The, the combined power of all the satellites is over five megawatts. So there, um, there's over five megawatts of solar from, from all the satellites combined. Uh, it's um, they're capable of outputting about thirty terabits per second of uh, data, and um, and, and it's starting in uh, actually next month, um, almost almost next month, I should say. It's starting in August. Uh, we should have. Uh, global connectivity uh, for everywhere except the poles. Um, uh, now, as I said, it's 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 really meant for sparsely populated uh, regions. Um, so the because uh, our our spot size talking talking in terms of cellular is uh, quite big. So we're well suited to low to medium density areas, but but not to high density areas. Uh, in the high density areas, we will be able to uh, serve a limited number of customers. Um, and um, it, but it is operational. Um, we recently passed the strategically notable number of uh, 69,420 active uh, users. Um, and we are, I think, on our way to having a few hundred thousand uh, users, uh, possibly uh, over 500,000 users. Um, within uh, 12 months. So I think it's growing rapidly. Um, and we're continuing to innovate the user terminal and the, uh, the satellite and the, uh, the ground stations and uh, sort of gateways and points of presence. Um, I think we're operational now in about 12 countries uh, and uh, more, more being added every month. So it's um, like I said, it's it's, it's a nice complement uh, to fiber and to 5G, um, and uh, it's it's also uh, although we can't talk about, about those deals uh, today because our partners are not ready to announce them. I think it can be quite useful to a lot of telcos for uh, data backhaul. Uh, so uh, just you know, if, you're, if people have cellular stations in remote regions, uh, just uh, using Starlink for data backhaul to their network uh, can be uh, a very cost-effective way of, of doing data backhaul. Um, and then uh, notably for Starlink relative to, say, other satellite communication systems, uh, we are at around 500 kilometers, uh, whereas uh, the geosynchronous satellites are around 36,000 kilometers. So latency for a Starlink system is uh, similar to latency for ground-based uh, fiber and, uh, and 5G. So we're expecting to get latency down under 20 milliseconds. Um, 
So you can still do, it, it feels very fast, like there's no lag. And you can, you can play, for example, competitive video games on a stalling system. This is a, a very tough market, Elon. I mean, if we look back over the last couple of decades, it has been littered with failure. We go as far back as the 1990s. There are big names um, that uh, no longer are with us. They've, they've tried to make satellite broadband a success. You've also now got strong competition. Um, the likes of, uh, of Amazon and OneWeb are also now attempting to launch new satellite broadband projects. Um, what is it that, that makes Starling different to, to what's gone on in decades beforehand, Elon, but also with your new competition as well? What is it that, that makes you different? Yes, um, well, when I gave a talk a few years ago about Starlink, I was asked, well, what, what, what's my goal for Starlink? And I said, well, our goal is not to go bankrupt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, every, as you point out, um, every other low Earth orbit communications constellation um, ever done has gone bankrupt. Uh, now, some of them have emerged from bankruptcy, um, but but the let's just say the original owners uh, did not benefit from <laughs> from those constellations. So, um, yeah, they've either, either gone bankrupt after. In, 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 most of them went bankrupt before even uh, deploying the constellation fully. And, and, uh, and in, even the ones that did just deploy their, their constellation, they, they still went bankrupt. You know, um, now they, they did subsequently emerge from bankruptcy, but you know, um, and obviously companies like Iridium and Orbcom are are doing reasonably well today, but but not for the original uh, owners. Um, so step number one for Starlink is don't go bankrupt. That is, uh, and. <laughs> and uh, you know, and then we can we'll, if, we, if we succeed in not going bankrupt, then, then that'll be great, and we can move on from there. Um, uh, but I, I do think, from, from a technology standpoint, uh, Starlink is uh, quite different from prior Leo constellations in that the technology that we're deploying is is very advanced. Uh, what happens often with space-based technology, um, somewhat ironically, is that tends to be um, uh, older technology that exists on the ground. Uh, so you, the companies generally have been very conservative, so they've, they've said, well, we want, to, we want technology that's proven to work on the ground, and then we have to test it very, you know, for, for years to make sure it's going to work in the vacuum of space with, you know, a higher radiation load and that kind of thing. And, uh, and so the technology that's generally been launched into orbit has been uh, older technology. And we took the opposite approach and said, we're, we're going to make technology that is, uh, in some ways at least, uh, more advanced than what is on the ground. And we're just going to take a chance. And, and uh, so we have uh, what's probably fair to say are the most sophisticated, but the most advanced uh, phase array uh, technologies that uh, the best of knowledge no one has, not even, it's not, not even at that sort of military level, uh, has this level of sophistication with phase ray technology. Um, and um, I think that that's, that's sort of quite important for uh, a fast-moving Leo constellation because the, the terminal, um, which is a user terminal that's also phase ray, uh, and the terminal on these, uh, and the terminal on the satellite, the antenna on the satellite, they're, they're both phase array, so you can switch uh, from one satellite that's moving rapidly overhead to another one uh, and do so uh, at the microsecond level. So there's no, you, you can't tell uh, as, as the system is switching over from one satellite to another. Um, there's no um, change in latency or jitter from one satellite to another. Um, and a single satellite uh, can um, illuminate uh, many different uh, user cell spots on the ground. Uh, so, and it's, and, it's, and it's a digital phase array system. So uh, we can continue to program or, and, and reprogram the system uh, to greater efficiency because it is digital. So, like I said, to the best of my knowledge, it is the most uh, advanced phase array system in the world. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, we also um, have the advantage of a of a launch system that is capable of a very high launch rate and capable of putting a lot of mass to orbit. Um, I believe um, 
Last year, SpaceX uh, delivered about two thirds of all uh, payload to orbit. And uh, this year we may uh, deliver closer to 80% of all payload to orbit of Earth. Mm -hmm. Just with that, you know, so, and of the remaining, of course, remains to be seen for this year if, if we actually put close to 80% of all payload to orbit. But uh, of the remaining, let's say roughly 20%, about 12% would be China or thereabouts, and then 8% is everyone else. So, the sheer to sheer uh, mass to orbit capability of the Falcon 9 rocket is uh, because it is a reus reusable booster and the, the fairing is reusable. So we only have to make the upper stage. Uh, is um, that, that has never existed before, um, and the and, and the cost of mass orbit also is the lowest it has ever been. So uh, because of reusability. So this is uh, the, the two well to get work together quite well. Um, but it has been quite an adventure learning how how to make these advanced satellites and learning how to make so many of them. And, and the user terminal the, the gateway. Um, and the, the satellites, for example, use a SpaceX developed uh, Krypton whole effect thruster, um, or which basically shoots out high speed ions of Krypton. It's kind of cool. Superman, watch out for our satellites, don't go close to them. It's <laughs> <laughs> so all like Krypton. Um, and um, just in general, it's, it's quite a clever satellite. And then we're getting close to launching satellite 1.5, which has laser intersatellite links. Um, and that will be used for, especially for uh, continuous connectivity over the uh, Arctic and Antarctic regions, uh, or basically the, 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 for the high polar regions, high, the high latitude uh, regions. Um, and then next year we'll start launching uh, version two of our satellite, which will, which will be significantly more capable. Um, and then, you know, all satellites from 1.5 onwards will have inter-satellite links. Um, and then we'll start getting our gateways and our uh, points of presence to uh, really directly to the um, the major server centers. Uh, so the data really goes directly from user terminal, from user terminal directly to the uh, server center. So if somebody's using uh, YouTube or Netflix or uh, or, uh, uh, you know, Google search or Xbox, whatever the case may be, uh, Amazon Web Services, that the, 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 the data flows in the shortest path possible, thus minimizing latency in general. Um, so even if, even if big chunks of the internet uh, go down, um, then you still have connectivity. Um, so we're pretty excited about the future. It's looking, you know, we're getting overconfident, but it's looking quite positive. Uh, and like I said, uh, just it serves as a as a great natural complement to um, uh, major telco, fiber, and uh, 5G. Talk us through, if you can, Elon, the, the finances of this huge project. How much are you investing in Starlink? How much are you prepared to invest in Starlink? Well, um, I think it depends on how you count investment. Uh, it, it's sort of what's the total? Of, I mean, one way to count investment is like what's the total amount of money invested before Starlink becomes positive cash flow, um, and um, and then do you, how much of that do you include Falcon Nine and everything we've done there? Um, you know, I think probably before we go to you know fully positive cash flow, it it might be. It'll be at least five billion dollars, uh, and maybe as much as ten. Um, so it's quite a lot, mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah. And, and then if you say like, well, how much are we going to invest even after it goes positive cash flow? I think we'll have to because you keep investing a great deal after that point in order to not be made. Um, Irrelevant by continued improvements in uh, cellular and, and continued extensions of cellular, um, or or or, or, uh, or lower cost uh, geosynchronous satellites, uh, which uh, you know geosynchronous satellites can offer can serve a, a a very large swath of territory, but but the total bandwidth they can serve is 
is not that great and the uh, latency is high. Uh, but still, we, we need to be able to offer our service at a, you know, a comparable or ideally lower rate than um, GTO uh, satellite connectivity. Um, so anyway, so it's basically t total investment probably is like at least five, maybe ten billion dollars, and then um, over time, it's going to be some multiple of that. I don't know, it could be twenty or thirty billion over time. So it's a lot, basically. Yep. It is a lot of money. Um, and to recoup yeah. that investment, obviously, you need customers and subscribers, Elon. Just in terms of the basics, to get myself set up with a, 